I'd like to, uh, to start by thanking you all for coming here to, to um, Firebury today. And uh, just, I was, it takes me back to when I, when I first bought this sort of ramshackle group of buildings back in 2016. And we had no indi indication in the sales particulars of what went on here and uh, of RAF Firebury. Um, or, or, or Bad Fibre Airfield, and it was only really through Google uh, after that that uh, it transpired that uh, Spitfires and Hurricanes flew out of here. And, and then more, more recently, um, I would like to thank Kenneth Bannerman and, and, and the Airfields of Britain Conservation Trust for providing a, a, a splendid memorial uh, to, the, to the men and women and, and folk that were based here 75 years ago and what they did, and therefore, if I can hand over to Kenneth, who will tell you a little bit more about the place and what went on here, and of course, will unveil the, uh, the memorial stone. So, Kenneth. Well, thank you very much, and uh, we're very grateful to the Classic Motor Hub for allowing us to erect this memorial here. We really appreciate your help. My name is Kenneth Bannerman. I'm the head and founder of the Airfields of Britain Conservation Trust, or ABCT for short. Essentially we're the world's first national airfield charity. It's quite revolutionary what we do, and we've been around since 2006. As regards Bybury Airfield, this, as with pretty much every airfield in Britain, has a surprisingly interesting, not to mention fascinating history. The airfield location was first discovered in the spring of 1939. It took time to, development, to develop and there's a very interesting albeit obscure file at the National Archives in London which dates, uh, which de details how uh, a future very well known archaeologist had to remove sadly an ancient long barrow, burial mound, called the Clump which was sited on what became the landing area south of uh, Pitcherwell uh, Wood. So once the airfield came into being in the spring of 1940, we don't know the exact date, but it was certainly used by the end of May and it was fully used from early July of 1940. It was primarily a relief landing ground for training aircraft who were based at the parent airfield of South Cerny, one of Gloucestershire's quite uh, better known airfields, still used by the army today. But the difference with, between Bybury and various other training airfields was, of course, its remarkable involvement in the Battle of Britain. It's fair to say this was probably the most unusual fighter airfield in the conflict, because it was primarily a training airfield. And two squadrons were based here on detachment over the summer and into winter of 1940. Number 87, which flew Hawker Hurricanes, and number 92, which flew Supermarine Spitfires. 87 Squadron was particularly active, and there was this extremely dramatic day on the 19th of August 1940, whereby a German Junkers 88 bomber made a sudden pass over the airfield, dropped four high explosive bombs and then strafed the airfield. Two machine gunners uh, returned fire and sadly there was uh, one aircraftman was killed in the attack. Meanwhile one Spitfire was destroyed in the ground and several others damaged. However two or three Spitfires, reports vary, immediately took off and then following an almighty chase shot down the bomber over the Solent, although one of the pilots then had to crash himself, make a forced landing. So this place, just purely on its own, deserved to, to be remembered because it played a massive part in defending this country in its greatest need during the Battle of Britain. After the fighters moved, at the, moved away at the end of 1940, bribery resumed its training role. The squadron, the unit that was based here, number three service flying training school, carried on but was renamed as number three pilots advanced flying unit in March 1942. But this time Bybury was being gradually developed as an airfield. Round about the time of the Battle of Britain, conditions were 
pretty primitive here, as we said. And uh, as is not unknown, pilots spent the night at a pub uh, not far from here uh, in a neighbouring village. And they also used the, the Swan pub in Bybury itself. However, the airfield gradually developed, so we had eventually, as we now see today, the blister hangars. We have the two survive. There were five created in total, and then there's also, albeit in modified form, the T1 hangar, just a little down the road from here. Uh, that was the main hangar for the airfield. So it gradually developed from being a relief landing ground to become a satellite airfield. And this proved very important in one other respect, that a beam approach training flight for instrument flying for pilots, number 1539, relocated its headquarters from South Cerny in the summer of 1943 to here, and it lasted along with the advanced flying unit until flying finally finished in the first half of November 1944. But this was not the end of Bybury Airfield by any means, not remotely. Because although it may not have been used for flying as such, it was still a very important storage airfield for a unit called Number 7 Maintenance Unit that held various forms of equipment here. And this was very important in its own right. And this carried on for quite a long while after the conflict ended until it was late as early 1950. Bybury incidentally was in the news considerably not long before that in October, November 1949 because some uh, rather shall we say unwise individuals decided to actually mount a robbery in one of the hangars here and they were very interested in wireless transmitter valves of all things that they were going to resell in a shop that one of the culprits had in London. So this actually had quite big news in uh, the, the national press. Thankfully they were all caught and convicted. Uh, on a lighter note, especially due to the great efforts of an RAF station called Golden Sally, who pinned down one of, the, one of the culprits during this night of October the 5th, 6th, 1949. It's fascinating the information you can find about airfields. So the airfield finally closed in February 1950, although the land was militarily retained until the summer of 1952 being relinquished on the same day incidentally August the 1st as Castle Coombe the motor racing circuit where incidentally we unveiled another similar memorial only yesterday so this place uh, not only very much deserved to be remembered but we mustn't ever forget that we we can't forget our airfields when it comes to this their social impact these places enough to say are phenomenally important in our everyday lives it's no exaggeration to say whatsoever that we could not survive without our airfields whether active or disused it's quite incredible how their their hidden but enormous impact even right down to see our health for example we cannot afford to lose these places so therefore all we can just respectfully ask you is that please do all you possibly can to help and remember all of our airfields and of course not forgetting all the personnel who served there including this poor aircraftman who died on active service here defending this airfield and in turn of course Britain on the 19th of August 1940. We must never ever forget and therefore uh, we are really delighted and honoured in conjunction with the Classic Motor Hub to be unveiling this memorial which is now our 92nd we have unveiled nearly 200 by the end of this year so we're moving as fast as we humanly can these are all disused airfields across the UK uh, in this case unveiling this airfield to the one and only Bybury Airfield thank you all very much thank you